All right, today we got a Chevy Avalanche here with the uh, complaint of a check engine light. So let's check it out, see what we got. And looks like we got P0140 oxygen sensor and a 0442 which is the uh, EVAP system. I think we'll go after the uh, oxygen sensor first. That uh, P0140 is an oxygen sensor code and uh, basically the uh, PCM or the engine computer is telling or it doesn't like what the uh, what the oxygen sensor is doing. It doesn't like the activity on it. So see if we can't test it out, see what's going on with it. All right, a little bit of background on this uh, system here. This Chevy Avalanche has four oxygen sensors and they're mounted in the exhaust stream represented by this blue line right here. So there's your four, four oxygen sensors. And basically the job of the oxygen sensor is to monitor the oxygen fuel content in the exhaust system. And also, this vehicle has two catalytic converters, one and two. The job of the catalytic converters is to reduce the uh, emissions in the tailpipe and the exhaust. And while I'm thinking of it, when you're working on the vehicle, all these components are going to be very hot, very hot, if the uh, system has been running recently. So if the car has been driven recently, let this stuff cool off before you start messing with it. And on this vehicle, we got two banks represented by this line. You got bank one and bank two. And bank one is on the left side of the vehicle, or in this case in the US, the driver's side, and bank two is going to be on the right side. For each catalytic converter, for each bank, you have a sensor that's in front of the catalytic converter or before the catalytic converter and you have a sensor that's after the catalytic converter and you have one on each side so that's how they're set up you get two in front and two behind and on this system the computer sends a 450 millivolt signal out to each one of these sensors and it uses that for its own diagnostic purposes 450 millivolts happens to be stoichiometric which is the perfect 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio and as the, basically the way these uh, oxygen sensors work is once the oxygen sensors heat up, it takes over and starts producing its, old, its own voltage from zero to one. And in order to work properly, they need to be hot. And so all these oxygen sensors have a built-in heater that helps them heat up quicker so that they can start working faster. And when these oxygen sensors are working properly, they switch basically from about 100 millivolts to 900 millivolts, um, but the more typical range is 200 to 800 millivolts. And anything above 450 is a rich signal, and anything below 450 is a lean signal to the computer. When these front oxygen sensors are working properly, they're going to switch from 800 to 200 to 800 to 200 pretty rapidly. That's how you know they're working and that's uh, the signal that the computer's reading. Those, that's how the fronts work. The backs are going to also switch, but they're not going to switch uh, as frequently. Now this P0140 that this vehicle has is a no activity code for bank one sensor two. And the way these oxygen sensors or banks are set up, if it's before the catalytic converter, it's sensor one. If it's after the catalytic converter, it's sensor two. And then it either bank one or bank two. So in this case, this oxygen sensor on bank one side, that's a bank one sensor one. This one is gonna be bank one sensor two, this one is gonna be bank two sensor one, and this one is gonna be bank two sensor two. And each one of them has a code or can set a check engine light code for a no activity. Now there are other oxygen sensor codes, there's tons of oxygen sensor codes, but these codes in particular are for no activity. And this basically means the computer you know, wants to see activity on these sensors and then it knows everything's working properly. And when it sees it's just flatlined, usually right at 450 millivolts, then the computer knows there's an issue. 
and on this vehicle the 0140 indicates bank one sensor two now, but you can also on the other on bank two for bank two sensor two it would be a p0160 and for the front banks it would be a p0134 for bank one sensor one and it would be a p0154 for bank two sensor one but each one of those is the same thing that we're working on. It's just a different sensor location because all four of these sensors are the same. They're the same oxygen sensor all the way around. So everything we're doing in this video would apply to all four of these sensors, not just this one here. It's just the different code that the computer's kicking out. Well, since we got the scan tool hooked up, let's go ahead and see what it's doing. You can see bank one sensor one is already working and active. Bank two sensor one is active. Bank two sensor two is active. The only one that's kind of dead right there, stuck at the same 450, is that uh, bank one sensor two. Now that we've verified um, that this sensor didn't have any act activity, we're going to go underneath the vehicle and we're going to check the wiring because we got to make sure that the wiring integrity is good from the sensor all the way to the computer. And th these are four wire oxygen sensors. You got two for the heater portion of the circuit and then you got two for the signal. And so we're going to go underneath the vehicle and check those four wires. All right, to get a good perspective, that bank one sensor two, you just go right underneath here, we'll go right underneath the vehicle. And right there, that's your uh, post cat bank one sensor two oxygen sensor right there. And the connection is just on the other side of this beam. I'll take you over to the other side and we'll check it out. All right, there it is right there. There's the wiring to it and the connection. You just need some kind of pry tool like this. Just pry it up out of there. Sometimes they don't come out that easy. There, it's just held in by that little plastic clip right there. And then you have to pull this little tab out. If I can get it in there. Just pull that tab out like that. And then this connector pops off just like that. That's how you can take it off. Or a disconnect a connector, I should say. So it's pretty easy to look at these wires and figure out what's what. Look at the two wires that are the same. That's for your heater. So in this case, two whites are your heater. And in this case, you got a black and a gray. Your gray is your ground. The black is the signal wire going to the PCM. So what we'll do, and you can just match it up. It means this bottom corner one right here is the signal wire so we will just look at some scan tool data you can see they're at about they send a 450 millivolt um, bias voltage to these sensors so all we got to do is touch that sensor with the power probe and we'll watch it uh, we'll watch it uh, change and if it does then we know that the wiring for the signal is good So we'll just touch it right there. And if you can see it dropped down to about 150. It keeps moving around, but you can see it dropped down to 150 or so. That indicates our wiring is good from there. And then we can command. We'll go ahead and command these uh, heaters on. Now the heater is on. And so once again we can just look and see, okay, the two white ones, 
which are on this side, these two on this side of the harness, which means over here it's these two right here. We'll just check and make sure we got power on ground now. And we got power. And we got ground. So we're good. And one last check. We'll just make sure our sensor ground is good. We'll just look right on the power probe. And you can see we got a good ground for the sensor. Alright, we're good. I'm satisfied. All the wiring is intact. We'll just go ahead and put a new oxygen sensor in this thing. Now, I understand some of you are not going to have all the diagnostic equipment that I have. Um, I always try to show cheaper ways, if I can, on how to diagnose stuff instead of just firing parts at it. Um, what you can do, if you have these codes and you're not comfortable with the scan tool or you're not comfortable doing all these checks into the vehicle, you can swap the sensors and see if your code moves. So in this case, if you had a P0140, you could swap it over to the other side and clear your codes and then drive the vehicle. And then now if all of a sudden you have a P0160, well then you know that uh, your oxygen sensor is bad because the problem moved. But if on the other hand, you move the sensors and you, you clear the codes and you still have a P0140, then you know that your problem is still on this side and it's not the sensor, it's probably a wiring issue or maybe even a computer issue. Um, but where I would go next, if that was the case, I would start looking at the wiring, find a break in the wire somewhere. Here's the part number for this vehicle. And um, it's the all four of these oxygen sensors are the same, so they should be all the same part. And these AC Delco uh, oxygen sensors already come with a little bit of uh, NICs on there uh, so if the one you get doesn't then just put a little bit of anti-seize right on the threads here don't get it on the sensor just put it on the threads alright and in order to get that uh, oxygen sensor out of there you're gonna need either a wrench you can use either a 22 millimeter wrench that'll fit right on there you use a 7 8 inch wrench that'll fit on there also or some kind of oxygen sensor that'll slip over the wires like this actually slip over the wires like this and go up onto it you can see I got a kit here with a, several different kinds for different situations but that's what you're going to need to get this off and get the new one on you can just pull the sensor wiring around and down that's all you got to do most of these are not in there too tight. You should just be able to just do that. And there you go. Some of them are a bear to get off, but usually you can just do that. Um, just be careful if you've been running the vehicle any length of time. These things are going to be hot. Let the vehicle cool off or you're going to burn yourself. Just go ahead and spin it out. All right, there's the old one. Let's grab the new one and get it put in. And you can see the difference in the sensors there. The bottom one being the one I just took out. Looks like a aftermarket sensor. Probably why it failed. If you look at the, uh, let's come over here to the other side, and you can look. Those sensors look the same. So yeah. I would stick with AC Delco on these vehicles if you want them to run right. Don't bother trying to save a few pennies. I'll just go ahead and get this threaded in. Make sure if yours doesn't have any anti-seize on there, get some anti-seize on there. Be careful not to get the wire all twisted up. And then we'll snug it up. Let's get it snug. That's all I got to do. We'll just route this wire back through the way it was. S 
get it routed here like this. We'll get it plugged in. Get our little plug or tab put back in. And then this Christmas tree plug just goes, our little, not a Christmas tree, but this little connection goes right down in here. Yeah, snap it into place, good to go. All right, as soon as we got the scan tool out, let's go ahead and check it. See if this thing needs a new battery. All right, let's watch the response of the O2s now. You can see bank one, sensor two already responding now. Yep, all 402 sensors responding now. That's a confirmed fix. And let's go to the uh, check engine trouble codes. And I'm pretty sure that 0442 was the uh, gas cap. It may have been the gas cap. I don't like the way it sits on there. I'm going to uh, definitely recommend they replace it. I did tighten it up, but uh, we'll just wait and see if that code comes back. But we'll go ahead and uh, we'll erase these codes and uh, call it a fix. And there you go. That's what it takes to troubleshoot, or at least how I troubleshoot. A P0140 on these GMs. So hey, if this video helped you, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And you can also do an ohms check on these. I did do it on the vehicle, but uh, it was a little too difficult for me to hold the leads and because uh, I didn't have my alligator leads on the vehicle. It was too difficult for me to film it on the vehicle, but I did do it. So you just, once again, the heater wires, the two colors that are the same, in this case the white ones. I got my leads connected up to those. We'll put our DVOM to ohms and then we'll just connect it. And a good reading is anywhere from 5 to, I don't know, 15 or 20. And in this case we're at 12.5, 12.3, right in that area. So this one actually tested out okay on the ohms. So just a bad oxygen sensor.